Hello sewing people of the internet. In this video I'm going to swap out my clutch motor on my industrial sewing machine for a new servo motor. This video isn't a tutorial on how to do that but it will probably provide enough information to help you if you get confused trying to install your own. Before we get to that uh, I realize that a lot of my viewers may not have industrial sewing machines and may not really understand the difference or the significance of the different kinds of motors. So I just want to quickly show the difference and first uh, let's look at what the motor on a typical domestic sewing machine looks like. So this is my Sailrite Ultra Feed LS1, not exactly a typical domestic machine, but it is in fact a domestic sewing machine and it has a small electric motor, in this case mounted to the back of the machine. It's a pretty typical way of mounting the motor. The Singer 201 and 1591s have a motor that's a direct drive motor so there's no belt just mounted to the back of the machine. Again, it's just a small motor. Other motors in newer machines may be mounted underneath the bed or in this upright part of the sewing machine body. On an industrial sewing machine, the motor is mounted underneath the table. And this machine has a clutch motor currently mounted to it. I ordered this motor from Amazon. There's like 10 different motors under 10 different names that all look exactly the same. So I just bought the cheapest one. I paid a little over $100, $120, something like that for this motor. Uh, it came with this user manual, which is, you know, typical, poorly translated and vague. Uh, and to my knowledge, I can't find any uh, installation instructions. I don't need them. Uh, this is pretty basic. Well, I don't think I'm gonna need them. Just know if you order a servo motor online, uh, it may not come with thorough instructions on the installation and setup of it. So you may have to do some research to make sure you know what you're getting into before you order. So this is everything that came in the box. And uh, since there's no documentation, I'm going to use words that I think apply to these things, but they may not be the correct terms, but this is everything that was in the box. So this is the motor itself, as you can see, it is way, way smaller and way lighter than the clutch motor that it's going to be replacing. This is the belt guard. I assume that goes on somewhere around here. This is the bracket for hanging the motor and it has an actuator to uh, a linkage to attach to the pedal and control the motor. This is the, uh, I guess the brains of the operation, the motor controller or something. Uh, on off switch and speed settings, a couple other things. Uh, also the power cord. This is a needle positioner. You don't need to have this uh, installed in order to use the servo motor, but one of the advantages of servo motors is the ability to use a needle positioner. So when you stop sewing, the needle can either be all the way down or all the way up. Um, it's my intention to use this. I'll see how easy it is to install. It might not get done in this video, but eventually I will be putting it on the machine. This is the linkage to go from the pedal to uh, this guy, this bracket. And then there's uh, hardware for mounting it. I'm not gonna open these yet.
So this is uh, where not having instructions can be a little bit frustrating. I'm having difficulty getting this arm to line up with the hole in this thing, this bracket or whatever. This is where your uh, belt tension adjustment gets made. And when this bracket is pushed all the way up against this other bracket with this bolt fully tightened down, as you can see, they don't line up. Well, there was a whole bunch of these fender washers that came with the uh, parts in the bag and it appears that they are meant to act as a spacer. Let's see if I can get where you can see this. To make this line up. And it couldn't be much less obvious that that's what they're for. I mean, they didn't make a spacer that's exactly the right size or make these parts actually fit each other. They just threw in a bunch of washers in the hopes that you will figure it out. So. I figured it out, but it probably would have saved me 10 minutes of frustration and profanity if it was more obvious. It would probably be a really good idea to put some anti-seize on this steel bolt going into this aluminum bracket. I don't have any and I'm not stopping to go get it, but don't do what I do. Okay, so I've got the motor installed and working. Uh, I had to do a little bit of fiddling to get this installed in my application. It might be partly due to me. This tabletop is a completely scratch-built tabletop that I made. I'm pretty sure I accurately drilled the holes to mount the motor, and the other motor that was in here, the clutch motor, was working fine. Everything seemed to fit right. But for some reason, when I mounted this motor, it was about a half an inch too far uh, this way and that made the belt rub against the table and kind of go at an angle which I'm pretty sure over probably not that long of a time would cause some wear on maybe bearings or something putting kind of a weird asymmetrical stress on it. So what I did was I just bought more washers to create more space uh, just like what was provided by the manufacturer here and don't do what I did here. Uh, this bolt does not thread anywhere near as far into this uh, bracket as it should. I don't know how much engineering thought went into how much of that bolt needs to be in. It seems fine to me. I'm going to go for it. It would probably be prudent to buy a longer bolt. And in fact, I tried to do that when I bought the washers. But the home improvement store that I had closest to me didn't have this size. It's a weird, it's like an M. 13 or something. I think they only went up to M12. So um, I didn't replace the bolt. Maybe I will at some point, but just don't do what I'm doing here. Do the right install. Uh, I didn't want to move these holes um, on my new tabletop though, so that's what I did. The rest of the installation was pretty straightforward. I just had to drive two screws into the bottom of the tabletop to mount the on off switch. Uh, there is a plug receptacle, a 110 volt receptacle in the back of this power box so that it powers my lamp now. So that's kind of nice. And uh, on a clutch motor, I don't like to have my lamp plugged into the motor. Uh, at least the ones that I've had, the, the way they were wired was they were only on with the motor. There might be a way to wire it differently, I don't know. But uh, in any event, now uh, I can leave the servo motor turned on all the time because it's not really drawing any power, whereas the clutch motor is constantly turning and making noise and drawing a lot of power. This way, if I need to do some seam ripping or some alteration or something, I can just do it sitting at the table and I don't have to have the clutch motor continuing to run just to have the light on. Or if uh, I want to shut everything down, I don't have to turn off the lamp separately from the motor. It's all on one switch. So the big advantage to a servo motor besides the uh, much better power consumption and the lack of noise is its controllability. Uh, I've used servo motors before. Uh, I don't know that it's as stark of a difference as some people make it sound. Uh, it's not like a clutch motor is an uncontrollable beast and the servo motor is uh, unable to go out of control. They're still fast, powerful motors, and if you step on the pedal with too much authority, it will definitely get away from you. So uh, don't think that they're not to be uh, respected. That said, it's possible to have one stitch at a time control.
Hold on. So this is happening all by itself, and I think I know what the problem is, but I thought I should point it out because you might encounter this problem yourself. I'm going to stop this by stepping on the back of the treadle, and then I'll explain what's happening. So um, I don't know how much of what I did I'm going to include in the video that you will have just seen before this clip, but uh, I chased a few uh, wild geese trying to figure this out. I think my issue with the motor continuing to run slowly after I removed my foot from the pedal was due to this linkage binding up. I had the, the linkage that came with my motor and the motor you get may vary. Uh, one end has like a ball joint on it with some movement and the other end is a rigid joint. And I had the ball joint on the pedal and the rigid joint on the arm of the motor. And I swapped those, that seemed to help some. I lubricated the pedal a little bit and finally I moved the pedal to make this line a little bit straighter of the, the linkage here. Uh, it seems to be working well now. It may be something I have to continue to mess around with. So uh, I, I think the take home from this for me is that if you're considering buying one of these cheap motors, uh, and again, there, there's 10 at least that look identical to this one, but with different names on them. Some may come with better instructions than this one did. Uh, but I would just assume that you may have to fiddle around with it a little bit to get it to work right. And if you're not mechanically adept and not willing to fiddle around with it, and then maybe you want to hold off. It's working now though. So servo motors are much quieter than clutch motors and they draw much less power, but the main attraction to a servo motor is its controllability. Uh, most of them have uh, an adjustment on the controller so you can adjust the speed. I have mine set up right now at like 4,000 stitches per minute, which is really fast and I'll probably slow it down from that some. But even at that very high speed, you have good slow speed control and yet you still have the high speed capability. I just want to check the ability of this machine to sew over thicker materials now that I have the servo motor in it. This is eight layers of this awning material. I uh, just want to see how that goes. Just for laughs, this is a piece of an old briefcase, so it's leather with some foam and some nylon inside it. Let's see how that works. So the servo motor is installed and seems to be working correctly and so far I really like it. I have not yet installed the needle positioner, that will be a subject for another video. My initial impressions are this motor is very inexpensive and that probably also means not terribly well made. Although it seems to function well and I'm basically impressed by it so far, my only concern is its longevity. A few years ago I worked for a marine canvas shop and the owner of that shop told me that he bought a bunch of servo motors, uh, inexpensive ones, and that they didn't last long at all and he ultimately bought very expensive motors that were lasting very well but they cost a lot of money. Now that was in a shop where the machines were running hard all day long. I'm not sitting at this machine sewing constantly so I'm hoping that this motor will last a reasonable amount of time uh, and if that doesn't happen, I'll definitely let everyone know. One positive thing I can say about uh, the motor that I ordered is everything I needed was in the box. I did have to go get more washers because of the unique situation here with this custom table and stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to assume that that's on me. But everything I needed was in the box. I was able to reuse the existing belt on the machine. All the other hardware was in the box. Uh, I appreciate not having to order something else when I've ordered something like this. Uh, it's nice that it was ready to go. So far I'm very impressed with the slow speed capabilities and the uh, high speed of the motor. 
Uh, I've used servo motors professionally several times, and this seems like the ones I've used uh, in professional shops. I want to know what you think. Are servo motors a gimmick, or are they a notable improvement? Do you think servo motors are a vast improvement over a clutch motor, or just a little bit of an improvement? That's what I think. Post your comments and any questions in the comments section below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, really helps. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down and posting a comment about what you didn't like down below is always helpful to me. I don't promise I'll agree with you. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love it if you subscribe, and thanks for watching.